Before we go any further with aerosol, I wanted to give you a kind of overview of everything that we're going to uh, discuss from books one and two of the Nicomachean Ethics. So this, this slide basically gives you uh, an overview of what's most important in Aristotle, um, the things that we're going to highlight and focus on. So we've already covered his account of the chief good as the kind of thing that all of our other actions are aiming towards. And we've uh, found that he identifies this chief good with happiness. And now what I would like to do is say a bit more about why he thinks it's correct that the chief good is happiness and what he means by happiness, because he very soon goes on to give uh, an answer to the question, what is happiness? We saw in the last video lectures that he considers some kind of common sense answers like happiness is pleasure, happiness is health, uh, happiness is honor, and so on. And he, uh, he instead wants to give a more sophisticated answer, a more, um, he thinks it's a, it's a more complex answer, but he thinks it's also a more accurate and a more correct answer to the question of what happiness is. So that's what we're going to get to very shortly. And then after doing that, we need to look more closely at one component of happiness, according to Aristotle, which is what he calls virtue. And um, that's part of why we study Aristotle in ethics, is because Aristotle's answer to this question of what is happiness actually also includes an answer to the question of what is the right thing to do and what's the difference between the right and the wrong thing to do, or what he calls virtue. And uh, that, you may recall, is the main theme of our unit one of the course, okay, is, is a kind of identifying and deciding between general theories about what is the difference between good and bad and how should we live. I want to also say briefly that I'm going to be skipping a lot of stuff in the text. We're just going to focus on specific parts of the text that are important for our purposes. I'm sorry to do that because there's so much that's interesting in this text, but we have to or else we'll run out of time. Here are two examples. Uh, I won't actually talk through these points, but feel free to freeze the video and um, read over these points if you like. You may have noticed them while you are reading book one. So you may recall this is about where we stopped in the last video. We saw that Aristotle answers the question of what's the final end by saying that it is happiness, but people disagree, he says, about what happiness is. He considers a number of answers that they give, and he ends up saying none of those answers are really good enough. Well, this leaves us with two questions. So one is, why does Aristotle think happiness is the final end? He's said that other people say that, but he hasn't himself really said why it's correct or incorrect to think that happiness is the final end. And then secondly, we have the question, what is happiness according to Aristotle? Because again, he says that these kind of common sense everyday answers aren't good enough. So what does he himself say is good enough? What's his answer to the question of what happiness is? So while I talk through these arguments, I'm just going to put up on the screen the pages from Aristotle's text where mm -hmm. he expresses these arguments. And if you want, you can freeze the slides and read over the original text uh, to kind of compare my summary with what's there uh, in the text. In answer to the first question, Aristotle provides just two arguments as to why happiness should be considered the final end. So or the chief good, as he calls it. So the first one is that uh, is is basically that um, happiness seems to be the most final of all of the ends that we pursue. Why is that? He says, well, here's why. Here's why he thinks that's true. Here's his argument. Um, if we ask whether we ever want happiness for the sake of something else, the answer is basically no. But if we ask do we ever want other things for the sake of happiness? The answer is yeah, all the time. So consider for instance, the relationship between pleasure and happiness. Do we want happiness for the sake of pleasure or do we want pleasure for the sake of happiness? It seems to make more sense to say we want pleasure for the sake of happiness. Likewise, uh, wealth. Do we want wealth for the sake of happiness or do we want happiness for the sake of wealth? 
Well, it would be really weird if somebody was like, I want to be happy so that I can make more money, right? People don't really talk that way. Instead, they say, I want to make more money so that I can be happy. And so since happiness, when we compare different end, uh, ends like that, and we ask how they're related, since happiness seems to always be put in a more final position, then it seems to be the most final of all the things that we want. So that's his first argument as to why we should think of happiness as the final end. His second argument is that happiness seems to be the best candidate for something that's entirely self-sufficient. That is, once we have it, we don't need anything else in addition to it, or we don't feel like something else is lacking that if it were added would make it, um, would make us uh, in an even better position than we were. So imagine somebody um, if you can, try to imagine whether somebody could ever say something and mean something like, you know, I'm fully happy. I'm absolutely as happy as I possibly could be. Like, I'm as happy as I possibly could be. But I think that I would be a little better off if I made a little bit more money <laughs> or if I was a little bit healthier. Um, that seems like a weird thing for someone to say. Why? It seems like a weird thing for someone to say because uh, if they are fully happy, it seems like that just means that there's not anything else that they want or need, right? So full happiness seems to involve being in a state that is fully self-sufficient, that doesn't require any more than what one already has. And, uh, and, and pleasure and wealth and so on aren't like that in the sense that you can imagine someone saying, you know, I experience a lot of pleasure in my life, but I wonder what does it all mean? You know, is that is this really what it's all about? Am I really, am I really happy? You can imagine someone saying that, right? But uh, it doesn't make sense really for someone to say, you know, I'm fully happy. I'm completely happy. I, I experience as much happiness as anybody could, but I would like to experience more pleasure. Now, you may not be convinced by the, these arguments, that's okay. I just thought I would share them with you and let you know that this is, uh, these are the reasons that Aristotle gives for saying that happiness is the final end. And that leads us again, finally, to the question, what is happiness according to Aristotle? So this is a question that Aristotle answers in section seven. And because again, these, um, this video is getting a bit long. I'm going to pause here and take up that question immediately in the next video.